Thank you for staying with us. You're still on to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now it's time for a hot topic. We're looking at Lagos Assembly raises and OK's 2.26 trillion Naira 2024 budget. So Lagos State now has increased their budget. And this is a trend that we've seen. But we're going to have someone who would come and, you know, just speak to us about all of this. And he's Joe Femi Danguro, is the founder and president of Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Hello, good morning, sir. Oh, I think um, there's a technical glitch, but we'll have him soon. So anyways, let's talk about the budget. We're looking at 2.26 trillion for Lagos State. And we've seen how there's always a rise and increase in the budget. I don't have to talk about this at all. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, one of the questions we'll be asking the guests is, um, um, is it proper to budget uh, on money that you do not even know if you will realize? Mm. Everybody in Lagos is, is crying about the tax, and then you're thinking about raising the budget based on the tax that... Are we there? Yeah, okay. Okay, I we think we have him now. now. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Mr. Femi Dagunro. Yeah. Well, we're talking yeah. about part of the infrastructure problems we have. You know. Happy New Year. <laughs> Whatever Thank happens, you. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're talking about the budget of Lagos State, and it was yeah. a, a particular um, amount was sent to the to the uh, uh, House of Assembly, yeah. and they raised it up and then approved the raised budget. And our qu right. first question that we were trying to ask you and we are asking you right now is um, what do you think about the trend of ministries and parastatals requesting a particular amount of money and the executive sending this amount, a, collate, a collated amount to the assembly, be it uh, state or national assembly, and then they change the figures and move it up. Do you think it's a trend uh, that is good or bad for our economy? Uh, first of all, we have to understand the fact that uh, the law allows that. Okay. You know, as long as the law allows that, there's nothing we uh, can do. And apart from that, you know, there is always this committee stage uh, in, in, in uh, planning or defending the budget, presenting the budget, and reading the budget. And when it gets to that committee stage, uh, there are opportunities for ministries, MDAs, and to come up and uh, defend it. And uh, at that point, a couple of things could go up or down. They could review it up and they could say, no, this is too much. Hello, sir. I, I, I think maybe you might be muted because we can't hear you. Hello? Oh, I think we've lost him again. We've lost the audio from mm. Mr. Femi Daguro. As soon as we are able to rejoin, or uh, he's able to rejoin, we are going to continue with him to give us his thoughts. Yeah. yeah but, well, the law allows them to yeah, give, so give them that because power. Because the law allows it, does it mean it has to be a trend? Does it mean you have to do that all the time? It has because never been reviewed down. I, I, okay, okay, maybe I it has back. been. But Hello, not, sir. I can't remember. Yes, okay. Can Sorry, you we lost now? your audio for a bit there. Continue with your train of thoughts. Yes, I, I was saying that, you know, there's nothing uh, we can do about that because the law allows that. And at the same time, uh, maybe during the committee stage, if they are invited and they have to defend it, and uh, they can see that, okay, uh, let's review it, uh, whether to increase or to decrease. And in most cases, like I had you say, um, it's always been increased. It's, it has never been decreased. Yeah. Yes. See, this is politics. And um, in some cases, you see, most of these things we talk about uh, budget, honestly, average citizen, average Nigerian does not even know what is all this budget about. They don't really care much about it. Let's put it that way. All they want to do, all they want is for them to have food on their table. All they want is for them to be able to take care of their children, to be able to go to the uh, hospital and be taken care of. You see, but the good thing about this budget, uh, when I had the speaker, uh, Obasa, 
uh, when he was saying that, look, let's deviate, let's move away from this palliative of giving rice and beans and all that. Let's begin to, you know, have the palliative of providing medications, drugs for the uh, public sector to, to do other things. I, I think that's a good one, you know, if uh, the government can do that line. And um, you see, in Lagos State, the IGR thing that you're talking about is uh, Lagos is uh, highly populated when you look at it, with about some uh, millions of people coming in daily or monthly, uh, hundreds of thousands of people still coming in. So infrastructure has to be developed. Infrastructures have to be maintained. Um, even if they have almost 7 or 8 percent of the national budget, yes, uh, I think it's just being transparent with the execution. That is what is most important here. Okay, um, so I want to talk about the impact of this budget on the citizens of Lagos State. How is this budget going to, even going to be impactful? Um, what are the things that we might start to see? You were talking about infrastructure and all of these things. So what are the things we might start to see when, um, when this budget is being realized? Yeah, just to join to that, there's also fear because the budget is uh, premised on tax and uh, you know revenue going up already a lot of people are complaining there's so much tax in lagos and that's why so many companies are rather in ogun state and then targeting the lagos market and people are leaving in ogun state and then coming to work in lagos state so in talking about the impact uh, what do you think will be uh, for the average lagosian in terms of tax because that is where the money the bulk of the money is going to come from people are afraid should they uh, be afraid or should they not be afraid? Good questions. Um, it's just a matter of time. Uh, most of the states, almost state, we have to uh, increase its own uh, IGR as well. And so, if anyone thinks of going to one state, be running away from tax, what about if the other states should say, okay, we're increasing our taxes? But the thing is to have uh, taxes streamlined so that. Uh, people are not bothered or people are not, you know, made to feel they are overpaying. I mean, here, if you look at it, uh, if you have to pay for your car registration and you have another one, 1,000 Naira for identification, and the federal government is saying, oh, you have to pay another 5,000 Naira for the same identification, you know, <laughs> so the, the whole thing is really uh, worrisome. It's not, it's not just uh, uh, in Lagos State. The budget has to take care of so many things. Yes, but taxes are burdening on the people. And uh, it's worrisome if this spend would go up like this. And then before you open an account again, if you are an NGO or you have to go and, and get uh, EFCC clearance. So all these things are not uh, something that any businessman or woman would want to go into. We want a business-friendly environment. We want people to come and invest in our state, in our country. And we have to give incentives rather than this giving dissentive. You know, we are, we are dis in incentivizing the whole thing, if there's anything like that. And then uh, it's not going to be uh, something that uh, investors will like. And, and those of us who are here uh, doing business in Lagos, we know Lagos is the commercial nerve center of Nigeria, but then when you have to pay uh, business uh, premise registration, you have to pay your pay. There are so many until it is streamlined. But if it is not streamlined, people will continue to complain and people will continue to look for a better place to put their investment. It's just straightforward like that. But I know that it's just a matter of time. Most of these states that uh, people go to, uh, when they have infrastructural problem as well, they will begin to increase. Uh, their taxes in order to generate uh, their internally uh, generated uh, to increase their idea let me put it that way yeah but for now they, they still remain the darlings of the people who want to survive in this Nigeria because Lagos is quite expensive in terms of taxation but the question directly that she asked was that what will be the impact on the people you said you had the uh, speaker of the House of Assembly Obasa talking about what they need to channel their energies to. So what really, according to your understanding of this uh, budget, uh, is going to be the impact on the people, the average Lagosian? You, you can understand it this way. If we have uh, a good transportation system, like we have this blue rail, all this uh, infrastructure being provided, and it, will, it, will, it will help the people. We have to do more. If the Fort Mainland Bridge is, is 
is coming up and is being executed properly, you have opportunities for people. If you have uh, inland waterways uh, being well managed, you know, a lot of things could come up. And if at the end of the day we have the coastal tourism, we have to boost the coastal tourism uh, in Lagos State, uh, that would be job opportunities for some people. A lot of all these opportunities could come, but we have to execute these projects, you know, you know, transparently. Uh, and that is why people, when they hear about uh, increasing budget, people just think about the padding. Why must you increase the budget? After all, they knew what they wanted to do before presenting the budget to you. Yeah. Okay, why don't you decrease? You know, so it, that is why I'm saying it's, 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 it's worrisome. But as long as the law allows it, there's nothing we can do. We can sit down here and talk about it tomorrow morning. It won't change anything. And by the way, the, the governor has not assented to it, but we just know that uh, the governor will sign it and it will become law and it, it, it will become functioning. You see, the thing is this, I, I see a situation whereby if citizens just look at what happened with uh, Dr. Doherty, he, he saw a fault in what was uploaded and he wrote, you know, the gentleman wrote and at the end of the day, <clears throat> the governor reacted, the ministries reacted that it was a fault on our side. This is what and what's supposed to be uploaded. If we as citizens, if we see something wrong, we should be able to connect with the government and let them understand it. And the government would connect with us and just, okay, this is truly a mistake or not a mistake and clarify the issue and we begin to understand. I think the, the, the masses, the citizens as well, we have a role to play to ensure that things are properly done. Despite the fact that Doherty was in the opposition, he, you know, he showed, uh, you know, humility in writing and uh, was accorded his respect as well. I think these are the things the citizens are expected to do. But just sitting down and complaining and, uh, you know, gossiping and all that kind of a thing will not help. We have to, you know, uh, stand up and uh, make our voices heard. All right, so let's talk about the number, which is um, 2.26 trillion naira. My question is, is this even feasible? Is this feasible to achieve? Or are we just looking at a lot of companies being taxed for this? So obviously, the number, the, the, for them to realize that number, it means heavy taxation, sometimes even double taxation on companies. So is this feasible, especially if our economy is the way it is at the moment? Well, you know, like I said, you know, the government has investments as well, and they, they are expecting return on their investments as well. And uh, it's something that might, let me say cautiously optimistic about, it, you know, being feasible to achieve, because they must have planned it. They know what it is, and that is why it's a budget. And uh, it is not something that is compulsory that uh, we must, but then it would be good if the government achieves this. Uh, but then it's a budget, it's planned, and they work towards it. And if they can achieve it, fine. Uh, it would be better because of some of these uh, capital projects they, they, they are planning to execute. And because, like I said, Lagos is a place whereby you have to continue to you know, improve on all these things. You know, these capital projects and their current expenditures, their, their expenditures, they, they are high as well, and they have to do more. And uh, as long as people keep coming here, people keep uh, looking forward to coming to Lagos. You say Lagos is expensive. It's just like when you stay uh, in, in, in Frankfurt or you, you want to live in New York. <clears throat> so you expect, excuse me, you expect this uh, to happen. And that is why uh, Lagos State has to improve on its uh, budgetary allocations as well. Mm. Well, well <clears throat> even though every time we talk about uh, the, the tax uh, that people might be taxed and all that, but experts have also said that the tax in Lagos may not be as bad as people are seeing it. A lot of the money that people pay is extortion rather than tax. Um, what do you think can be done by Lagos State to curb these uh, menace of extortion? Uh, because you are supposed to pay 10000 for instance, and you don't have the 10000 or you don't want to pay. Somebody comes and says, okay, give me five. just give, give me five and mm -hmm. let's forget about it. You might end up paying those five five on to, uh, up to three times. Which is now the, more than, more than the, the, the amount that is supposed to be asked of you. So what can, it, can be done to make sure that this multiple, I wouldn't even call it multiple taxation, the extortion fee that a lot of people have been paying in Lagos in the name of tax uh, will be curbed? That is why I said we have to streamline it. If you don't streamline this, because actually look at that scenario you have just painted. The 5,000 is not going to the government, so the government is losing. 
Yeah. You know? So uh, the government cannot afford to be losing money that way. So the most important thing is just when we streamline it, if the government can streamline some of these things, and then the money will come directly to them, and it, it should be something good for the government. If you ask uh, a local government to collect a certain tax uh, from its people, and uh, some bunch of people will just be on the road and block your way and say you have to pay your radio and TV tax, just like that, you know, no receipt, nothing. But then, if it has been streamlined in a way that, you know, we are registering your car, this, uh, you have a radio in your car, no doubt about that. You are paying all these things together. Like what they have just done now, if you look at when you are, you know, registering your car or renewing your vehicle license, a lot of things have been put into it. So you don't need to go about paying one point to the other and, you know, running around to do that. Even your insurance, everything is packaged in, in one, uh, one point, at one point. So if that can be streamlined, uh, I mean, the government will have more money in their purses and th th there will be no need for this multiple or double taxation we all complain about. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes yeah. to be embarrassed. But then uh, it's just that the, the government has to find its way uh, to streamline and to bring back sanity into the means and ways of collecting these taxes. Yes, you are correct when you have to do extortion. But, you know, I, I think uh, no government is interested in seeing its people uh, having been uh, messed up that way, you know, in terms of extortion and stuff like that. Okay, um, so I was going to ask, right, um, this budget, do you think it can go far enough to address the issue of the state? And, you know, what are the areas this budget can, you know, address? Well, like I said, the, the budget itself is not going to solve the entire problem of Lagos State at once. Uh, this is 2024. We will still continue to have budgets 2025 and more years to come. Uh, by the grace of God. And uh, we have to begin to look at it. Whatever this can uh, resolve, whatever this can maintain, whatever this can, you know, settle, let us do it carefully in a prepared manner and in a transparent manner. That's the most important thing we have to look into. So, but it may not, and it will not solve the problem of Lagos State in 2024. You know, each state will continue to uh, improve on the, you know, budgetary system and they have to improve on their uh, recurrent expenditures, they have to improve on their capital expenditure, they just have to improve. The people want to see uh, government uh, taking care of them, yes, in so many ways. The businesses want to be considered and the government has to, at the same time, a dialogue with the small and medium scale entrepreneurs as well. It is not just only the trillion naira making uh, uh, companies. You know, we have the small and medium scale entrepreneurs who feel they are not being considered, they are not being, uh, you know, talked to, they are not being involved because they have the problem, the artisans as well. So I think uh, the government has to look into that carefully, uh, to listen to these people, and uh, even if you can't resolve all their problems at all, but engage them, have a dialogue with them. These are the, the backbone of the economy, whether you like it or not. You have the micro and you have the macro as well. So if the, if the micro is suffering, it will affect the macro economy as, as well. So we have to begin to look into the micro economy and support them one way or the other. It is not enough just to give 5,000, 20,000, 50,000 to them. I mean, we have to provide them a, a sustainable development program whereby uh, the government has to back up some few things. And then uh, you, can, you can take a loan, uh, a single digit loan, uh, with the government uh, backing. I mean, these are the things that are being done in, in other countries. And we should be part of this country in the world that will say, look, uh, investors or small and medium scale entrepreneurs, they can enjoy part of this budget as well. So, in, in a nutshell, I think a lot still has to be done when it comes to the area of business development in Lagos State. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you that, uh, but I think you should just, for more emphasis, add some more uh, solutions to it because you are a commercial expert, you know, you are the founder and president of Kosofe Chamber of Commerce and Industry. What are the things, what are the takeaways from 2023 into 2024 that you want the government specifically, apart from the ones that you have mentioned, to address to make sure that Lagos being the commercial nerve center of, uh, of Nigeria remains that commercial nerve center and um, commerce in Lagos would be easy for the people who want to engage in it. You've talked about the smaller and medium scale enterprises and all that. What other things can be done to make the commercial atmosphere flourish in Lagos 
in 2024. What can engage our youths as well? You know, we have to train our, our youths. We have to engage them to, you know, pick up a skill and and learn a skill and 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 learn it well. Because you know, uh, before you know it, you are already running short of uh, uh, skilled labor. You know, and it's it's getting worse if. Uh, other countries, European countries, are coming to Africa uh, to take our skilled labor away. Not only the medical doctors or the nurses; they are beginning to look for bricklayers, uh, electricians, and, and and all these other uh, skilled uh, uh, artisans. And so, if we don't train more, we should engage uh, you know these youths to understand that look, uh, it is good to, to to be trained and it is good to have the skill. It is not enough to have a BSc in geography or BSc in, uh, in, in, in any of these uh, courses, but it is good to have this training. And that is why uh, the government has to in, in, increase the area, the training, uh, the aspect of training. And in all their courses in the universities and uh, polytechnic, it has to be emphasized that all should be uh, made on the area or in the area of uh, skill acquisition. It is very important because if we don't have that, even if the companies that are situated in here or located here, but one day they begin to see that we have to bring in the skill labor from uh, our neighboring countries, and which will not be a good thing for us. Well, for me, I, I know one of the things that I would love as a person is to ensure that there are no portals on the road. Because I know how much, um, one time I was driving and I went into a ditch and I spent over 200k um, repairing to my fix car, car, to fix the car. Um, so I'm sure there are other people like me that have other things that they would really love from this government or from Lagos state government. Education for me is yeah. one of them. Yeah, I was even going to go to that. that. So, that's Let me just tell you something about that portfolio thing. You see, sometimes we have to look, it might be uh, a local government uh, road. You know, we, we have the roads, they are on streets and some other places. But because most of us, we don't engage our lawmakers at the local level and at the state level. So if we begin to engage them, if you have that portal that's so bad and costs you so much, you should have to just send a message to your uh, lawmaker, you know, until we begin to see that lawmakers are not bread makers. They are not the rice distributors, you see. But, you know, people just wait until when there's any disaster or crisis and we begin to see them distributing rice or whatever they are not because they are supposed to have to do this oversight function if the road is bad and maybe it has been budgeted for and it is not done or it's not done well and you are sending a letter or a mail or phone call to you know with the attached bill of your repairs you know it might go a long way i'm not saying it, it might be an immediate thing that they will just react but if one or two or three people you know educated people like you you know should come up with this they will listen at some point. It might not be an immediate thing, but that's what I'm saying. We have to rise up as, as citizens and begin to engage them. If we don't engage them and we wait on it to become worse, then we are not doing our duties as well. Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know for you. Um, well, I was going to even finish my question. <coughs> a lot of okay, but carry on. A, a lot of a lot of times we don't see our lawmakers, except we have to write letters, open letters on the national daily, which we we'll have to pay and all that. But you just raised the question of engaging our local government uh, uh, chieftains. Mm. Uh, what would you, how would you assess the local government in Lagos? Because uh, elsewhere, everywhere in Nigeria, local government doesn't seem to have anything uh, so tangible that you can hold them accountable for. So I don't know the road that is belonging to the local government and yes. the one that is for the state because I'm always or seeing the state well. doing what a, one or two things. So. How would you assess the local government in Lagos State? Do you think they really are autonomous and can be engaged in things like this and say, you are responsible for this, go and fix it? You see, when you talk about being autonomous, you know, you want to look at what the law says. But in reality, it might be a different ball game. But like I said, uh, the law permits you, as a, citizen of, as a citizen of this country, to do certain things. Uh, and one of them is just to engage your lawmakers, your councillor, your ward representative, your, you know, all your representatives in the House of Assembly, in the, at the Senate, and wherever they are. But in most cases, we as citizens, we don't do that. 
And as long as we don't do that, okay, it's another thing to say, do you even have their telephone number? Do you know their addresses? Why don't we write directly to the House of Assembly? They all have uh, the portal that will take these letters to them. If you can't reach them directly, write to them. Lagos State House of Assembly, name, get a name on, on online and get all these things done online. You see all these names, their offices and whatever. Send it directly to them. And if you can copy the speaker, you know, the speaker who gets it or whoever, or the committee chair, I mean, there is a committee for that so until we begin to you know increase uh, our own effort in making sure that things work better for for us as well then when you talk about the the capacity or their ability to perform yes if it is based on performance you might see that some are performing and some are not really performing and it is because we are not engaging, I repeat. If we engage them, we have to engage them meaningfully. But some of us are, you know, some, you know, you say, I don't want to be involved in politics. I don't want to get myself involved in politics. If you don't want to get yourself involved in politics and things are not being done well, then you have yourself to blame. So these are the areas whereby I want people, you see, most of us, especially the so-called elites, uh, you know, they don't even know who represents their world. They don't even know who represents uh, their constituency. You know, so let's get involved one way or the other and begin to make sure that things work well for us, not just for them, but for us as citizens. Unless we do that, and that's why I cited the example of uh, that gentleman, Dohati, what he has done. Look at what's going on in Lagos right now. You know, you have ministries all over the place, but look at what that gentleman is doing. What happened? You know, this is this is 2024, and you see what the the, the climate change. You see what it has, it has done, and what it's still doing in other countries. And look at people deli deliberately flouting the law of Lagos State. And this guy came in, focused, and is doing what he's supposed to do. So that is, some of these people are focused and they want the assistance, you know, they want the support of the masses. And today, you know, Ministry of Environment in Lagos State and is, 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 is trending just because one man there decided that he's going to be focused to do the right thing. So it's trending because of so many things. And it's not about tribal issue, it's not about any, it's just about the facts and it's about the law. So let's begin to get something done for ourselves. All right. So in getting things done, I think one takeaway here is for people to be able to engage their lawmakers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Most of the time, we don't even have their, their email addresses. We think we should write to the... Or the um, phone. So the, how do I even write? How you, do I write, write to the State Assembly and copy them, copy the yes, speaker and mention you have, mention even that. sometimes when you have the telephone number, it might be outdated, the email might be outdated. And that is why I said, you know, writing straight, emailing straight, or writing a straight letter, straight to the, the State Assembly, straight to the National Assembly, they will surely get it. And in some cases, they have offices anyway. But if their offices are not uh, open, maybe regularly, it's a different issue. And when we begin to talk about state on national TV like this, and they'll begin to say, oh, people are watching us, but we concentrate too much on Abuja. You know, yeah. and uh, you know, we, we leave out the local government, we leave out the state government, and that is why you know some of them will take it for granted. After all, it's only Abuja, the president, they are, they are bombarding. I mean, let's keep you know, let's keep our ways off. You know, so we have to begin to talk about states. We have to begin to talk about a small and medium enterprises. Nobody is hearing mostly about small and medium enterprises. You hear about the, uh, you know, all these other big time companies and the people, the, the microeconomy is suffering as well. So if we begin to pick it up from the grassroots, you know, then it will, you know, there will be an effect in the long run. But if we don't pick it up from the grassroots, uh, the, the changes will not really come the way we want it. So the grassroots has an importance. And that is what we have to begin to look into. Okay. Um, I know you said we have to, you know, engage them. But one thing I was um, speaking about during Off the Press was the fact that most of the time we don't really have like a maintenance culture in Nigeria. And this is me talking about maybe like roads or whatever. Shouldn't there be a team of people with, you know, these um, representatives or whichever um, government official, shouldn't there be a team of people that monitor these things that needs to be done? Do we have to, do we have to write when it's already bad? Shouldn't they, you know, see these things and say, okay, we know that at so so time we need to maintain this road. We know that at so so time, let's even, I don't even want to go into housing. 
But you, you, you have to, because I want to believe that as a lawmaker, you were supposed to be thinking for the people. You're supposed to be thinking what can be beneficial. You're thinking out of the box. You're thinking of ideas, you know, that would work for the people of Lagos or for the people of Nigeria as a whole. So shouldn't they have teams? Do we have to be the one that have to write to them to say, oh, you know, this road is bad. Or, oh, my landlord has increased my rent with over 100%. Or, oh, like... Why can't we have all of these regulations in place and teams that can start to carry out the job that they were being elected for or asked to do? You see, that's why I mentioned that uh, gentleman's name, Wahab, uh, yeah. specifically. But that's uh, what it means. We can see it. And we need more Wahabs. We need more people to, you know, to fully... Uh, be focused on what they are, you know, appointed to do, and that's the same thing at the federal level. I keep mentioning that gentleman Ojo at the uh, Interior Ministry, what he's doing, and we General can see affairs, that. Yeah. But you know, uh, let's begin to, you know, mention their names. Let's begin to, you know, uh, you know, praise them when it's necessary. You know, and those who are not doing well, we we'll begin to tell them to do well as well. You know, there should be performance recognition for all these people as well. So if we begin to do that, there, the, one of the things the assembly men and women are to do is this oversight function that is going around making sure that if you say you want to build road A, that this road A is well built and according to specification and based on what you budgeted for. So th there should be a monitoring team in, 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 this, in, in, in the state. There should be a monitoring team uh, in the local government. Yes, there should be. But when they are not performing well, the citizens have to wake them up. And that is why we are the taxpaying people. That's why we are citizens of Nigeria. That is our duties as well. We have a duty, unless we don't want to be sincere to ourselves. And it's part of our duty to do that. If they are sleeping, we wake them up and say, look, this is the time to do this. This is the time. You know, unless we begin to do that, honestly speaking, I don't think uh, we have to wait for them to think for us. If somebody doesn't think for you and you think for yourself what is good, why don't you tell him, listen, this is what I thought for myself. I mean, it's as simple as that. But it may not be as simple as that, getting it done, getting across to them, and that is why we have to, you know, organizations have to be formed. Look at even the chambers of commerce and industry. We have to have, in all local government, there should be more local government uh, chambers. It shouldn't be just one at the top. You know, we should have more so that the people at the grassroots at each local government will begin to understand that, look, we can be, you know, represented. We can now have advocacy group. We should have, you know, what's it called? Uh, thrift organizations. We should have cooperative societies in all local government. It shouldn't just be this, uh, when there's a crisis, oh, take palliative and that's the end. And you'll be waiting for the next crisis to get palliatives? No. Let's begin to come together as citizens and plan for ourselves and execute some things for ourselves. You know, our roads, we can, we can help maintain it. Is, it. is it the government that will tell landlords to plant uh, trees in front of his house or in his compound? But we see houses being developed. You don't have trees, you don't have flowers. I mean, these are the things that people should do. And when the government comes around and says, look, you want to bulldoze one or two areas and begin to plant flowers and begin to plant trees, then they say the government has come again. I'm not justifying, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to say uh, the government is good or the government is bad, but I'm saying some of the things we as citizens, we need to do, you know, if I plant flowers in my compound or in my, in my house, it is for my own betterment. If I plant trees around my house, but look at what is going on today. Look at all these new buildings here and there. Fantastic yeah. architectural design, but nothing. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm glad that at least you've singled out one commissioner or one person in Lagos State, Wahab, and said that he's done a, a lot of good things. Uh, Minister, um, commissioner for Environment is, is very good. Um, we do hope that uh, he will also take into consideration the fact that Lagos has been ranked almost the highest when it comes to open defecation, yeah. uh, that these are culprit states that are not making it easy for that to be achieved. Uh, the ban on uh, open defecation. Let him have his team, since he has the team that mm -hmm. goes around to tell him, not just demolishing markets, let him have his team at least just go 
pass through the um, pedestrian bridge in Ojodu Bega, for instance, which is like the welcome to Lagos that we've been hearing about. That is where you enter Lagos and you find out that this, actually you are in Lagos. The, the, amount, the amount of filth that mm. is in that place is, is terrible. Because if a tourist is coming from America, it is not to come and see uh, Banana Island. It's not to come and see... They want to go into the streets. Yes, it wants to go into the street, take a keke as everybody else, and see places that really make Lagos the bustling city in Nigeria. And it will be an eyesore for someone to take a pedestrian bridge and look down and see all kinds of nasty things. The median that was so beautifully done i was expecting they would plant some ornamental plants yeah. and all that but it wasn't done but even if it's not done let it be clean enough because once you enter lagos the first thing that strikes you is the stench which should not be so if you have his ear please tell him or who, if anybody else who is listening to us or watching us right now has his ear let him do something about this a guest we had earlier on was talking about the fact that we don't have uh, public convenience and that's why a lot of things happen like this but let him look at the root causes and find out what can be done to clear the drains and to stop the open defecation and so many other things that are not very good for our environment yeah it's interesting you even talked about drains um, right now we're in the dry season so you don't really see a lot of water but then when it starts to rain, everywhere is flooded, especially on the island. Mm -hmm. So these are things that, you know, we need to start looking into. But I mean, I'm glad we've had this conversation. At least now I know that I need to write a mail um, <laughs> to them and, you know, just state all of our concerns. So as Nigerians or as Lagosians, we need to start to state our concerns to these people so they can start to do the work and we, we get to see the change that we actually desire. Mm -hmm. But yes, this is where... Um, we will we'll wrap it up here well with you thank you so much for um coming and just having a conversation with us we we really appreciate your time and your valuable contributions thank you so much sir you're most welcome i okay. appreciate it have happy a good day new, happy new year to you happy new year thank you once again thank you all right we've been speaking with joe femi danguro the founder and president of koshofe chamber of commerce and industry and we're talking about the lagos state budget of about 2.28 trillion naira mm -hmm. but yes um sadly we were supposed to be talking about mapping your success as our second hot topic but lagos and traffic mm -hmm. happened to our second <laughs> guest yes that, okay. that, that's what happened this morning but i'm sure we'll have it we'll have him again um sometime soon yeah some, some somebody might say uh that's the beauty of technology you could have had him on zoom or him or her on zoom yeah but there are some guests that we just want them to be in the studio so yeah, that the interaction will, be, yes, will exactly. be better than that. But we promise you we are going to bring back that guest uh, when it will be more comfortable for all of us and then we'll have that conversation because we're just starting 2024 yes. and it's good and we want you to start on the right note mm -hmm. and we want your success this year Last so week that's we very crucial about investment maybe we'll do a, a part two of that so that you get to know that you can actually invest that small money that you don't need for the next three months or the next six months and all that and instead of uh, being debited by the banks interestingly i even said i was going to call him mm -hmm. um the little money i have running, lying around i want to you know gather everything together and then even if i want i mean i'm going to start small because mm -hmm. as we all know and i've stated it so many times i'm not the risk taker i, I don't like and i've never done such because mm -hmm. i'm like um i'm not sure i'd rather keep my money if i could dig a hole in my backyard <laughs> <laughs> and put the money there i would have but um i think i'm right now i'm being open it's a new year Mm -hmm. so i'm being open to more opportunities and i'm like okay maybe we can just try this if it's two months three months and let's just see what we get then we can now dip our legs into the pond later on so it just reminds me of the quote for the day that the impossibilities of yesterday mm -hmm. or, or the achievements oh. uh, paraphrasing now the yeah. achievements of today were the impossibilities, impossibilities of, yesterday. of yesterday so what you're thinking is not achievable or it's too risky or it's too mm. uh, you know can i can i not <laughs> tomorrow might be this, the only thing that will make you uh, say yes 2024 was really good for me mm -hmm. you have to take the risk you have you to have take the to. step otherwise things don't get done yeah so that's i'm how. ready i'm ready to take the risk this okay. year <laughs> 2024 is my year of taking good and calculated risk so we're not just telling you to go there and just take risk don't go and put your money into all You'll these ponzi like schemes just bought a new car the, the first car you know you can't sleep well mm. when you just buy the first car 
You're like, ah, any small noise outside, is that my That's car? why you should have insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if you don't have insurance. That's but why you should you see, have insurance. These are things that you need to know. Have insurance for everything. There's insurance for virtually everything, including your life. Yes. So you do these things. Health uh, insurance, life insurance, day, car insurance. You are better for it. Yeah. Well, it's been a wonderful run this yeah. morning, and we're hoping that we'll meet again tomorrow morning. Uh, we hope that you'll have a very, very wonderful day today. Until tomorrow, my name is Nyamgul Agayu. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an amazing day. Right.